I have some regret about not getting to some video over the weekend that made me smile all weekend in the plastic, plastic forced on way that A-Rod smile was just stuck to his face as he faked his way through trying to be incredibly pleased that he and Derek Jeter were sharing a set. Uh, those two and their history is complicated and funny and amazing. A-Rod goes to the Yankees and is so not Jeter that even though he's the better shortstop, he can't play shortstop because he's got to get over to the side for Jeter. Their relationship was a mess, which is surprising that it got out in public because none of Jeter's stuff ends up getting out in public. And then as Fox is in London to celebrate baseball being global, they trot out Jeter and A-Rod on the same set. And the video from that, I couldn't stop laughing at how pasted on A-Rod's teeth were. Like, it was just teeth the entire time, and him moving back and forth, half mannequin, half, uh, you know, wax sculpture. And I'm not even talking about, like, the surgery on his face. He, he's he's looked awfully reckless, young. Reckless. I don't know that if it's Allegedly. surgery. I'm not making fun of surgery. I'm making fun of how uncomfortable he was sitting next to Jeter. And Samson is here, and he's got actual inside information on what their relationship actually is because he pitted them against each other to raise the value of the Marlins to a place it should never have been. It's not fake. A lot of this, lot of this is manufactured like wrestling. The thing with Jeter and A-Rod, and A-Rod's taken a hit recently with J-Lo gone and, and now Jeter coming to Fox, which he did not want to have happen. At all. Didn't want to share But A-Rod works everywhere. He works at Fox and ESPN. He doesn't want to share either stage with him? A-Rod does not like sharing anything with anybody. The difference between A-Rod and Jeter, other than steroids, which Jeter never did, and A-Rod did, the difference is they have the feeling that what they did on the baseball field will translate into the business world. And that's really the only thing I took advantage of, is that they were so interested in in how to get into the business of ownership. And we see with players, LeBron wants to get an expansion team in Vegas, and now everyone's all excited. It started when I was younger with a guy named Mario Lemieux, who people may not remember. And the reason he got into ownership is his team was bankrupt and he was owed money. And he said, "This it's better to own a team than to play on a team. So A-Rod always thought this, and now A-Rod's in the media, and he and Jeter still look at each other, and it's not good. Baseball is not happy. They were fine with Jeter running the Marlins. They were fine when he was fired by Bruce Sherman. And they were fine when Fox said, hey, how about we bring in Jeter now because he's become a pitch man. What they did not properly calculate is that the buy-in from A-Rod is just not there. And we saw it manifest itself already. So it's a concern because you can't throw people together. We've talked about what happens when you throw talent together. If it doesn't work, it's a big deal for MLB and for Fox. But why won't it work? Why won't he just be professional? A-Rod's pretty interchangeable. He's not that good at it. I don't think Jeter's going to be that good at it. They're just going to be really famous. That is what the baseball pre- and post-games are. And, the you know, it is rare. We talk about Charles Barkley, Kenny Smith, that's and Shaq. That's rare to have both talent – on the court but they're not going to have it. All they're going to do is take the Red Sox and Yankees from that era, a, a, you know, Ortiz and Pedro and all you guys that dominated baseball 20 years ago, back when baseball made stars that looked like that, we'll just throw you all on the same set or around each other and we'll see what comes from it because it doesn't matter whether you get along or not. You, you can have a really good pregame show if one person's like A-Rod, if one person's like Derek Jeter. Poppy is a, a great television character and – he had a good friendship with A-Rod, and I do think it, it kind of worked. It'll be interesting to see what happens with, with Derek Jeter. But look, NHL on TNT. TNT's pre- and post-show is outstanding. Their They're getting are something great. out of Gretzky, and I've always thought Gretzky was bad. Gretzky's not good at television. In fact, they, they realize that Gretzky isn't there, and they bring Gretzky in uh, intermittently as opposed to regularly like he did last, like they did last season. But they have all this great chemistry on the rest of the dais, and the fun is infectious, and it ends up being a good supplement. Having the great one on your pregame show brings a gravity and, and a respectability while you're getting all these people in the tent. And also, by happy chance, he's starting to have fun with the other people, and it's a good mix. But when you have two people that are cut from the cloth of 
Derek Jeter and A-Rod. How is that going to work? There, there isn't enough big poppy to go around. It's boring is how it's going to work. And I think that anyone who watched that, you were laughing. You were laughing at the theater of it. I was wincing. I'm laughing at the, at the discomfort. There was one time I saw them interviewed on a business channel, and both of them clearly didn't want to be around each other. Like, if I were to say to you, hey, A-Rod, put him on a set with somebody he's least likely to have chemistry with, Jeter's going to be very high on my list of people that can be A-Rod's peer or better than him and have a whole history of past that be, that looks across the dais at A-Rod and says, I know you're a fraud. I, I, I hated what a fraud you were when you were in my clubhouse with me as the highest paid player and you never liked that I was the captain, that you were never going to be able to be me in pinstripes, that you were going to go, that you were going to resurrect your career by going to offices where Manfred was, kicking over a briefcase to allege that you weren't using steroids, lying to everybody. Like, that's your, that's how, you went on, you went on Michael Kay's show and Francesca, just a torrent of lies, and then you're suspended for a year. And Jeter gets out of New York clean and, and doesn't get dirty until he comes down here. And, is and, he dirty now? And fails. Is he dirty well, now? Well, let's ask Jeremy. Jeremy's around the club but afraid to say things still about Jeter. I've, I've sensed Whoa. you are, you are, you are. I've noticed this Derek about you. Derek Jeter was also, this is the part that's difficult, and I think it's part of why my opinion on Derek Jeter is as strong and emotional as it is, is he was my first ever favorite player. And then... Fast forward years later, and I, I covered a Marlins team where he's the owner and ultimately really didn't complete the job that he set out to do. Um, the, the thing with Derek Jeter and A-Rod here that's so frustrating, I think, from the former Jeter fan perspective is A-Rod's won. Like, A-Rod won the battle of the two of them. Jeter got into ownership, didn't exactly do a great job as an owner, and now is out of it. And where is he? Sitting next to A-Rod joking on TV, opening up a package from Big Poppy that has a Red Sox jersey, having to pretend to be all of these things. He's the pitch man. He's got the painted on smile. He's the fraud too. And that part is honestly infuriating if you're looking at the Jeter image. Jeter's always been a fraud. Well, News sure, alert. sure. But this is, whoa. it's exposed whoa. here, right? Like th wait, wait, this wait. element of exposure. Ask people in the know about Derek Jeter and I'll start. Happy to start. All right, you can start. Yeah, having nothing to do with the fact, I'm, I'm thankful to him for being so dumb as to do what he did with the Marlins. So I'm thankful to him. So I'm not criticizing him at all. But Jeremy, you didn't even object to Samson calling Jeter a fraud. I kind of started it. You know, he ended up here saying all these things that he was going to do. He didn't exactly follow through on those. And now the big thing with Jeter was always like, like he was the pristine. He was aloof. He was this big bigger character sort of like Michael Jordan where he didn't have to do any of the other things that these guys stoop to in their post career so you're of saying salesmen. You're, you're watching baseball's pregame show and you feel like Jeter's the Vegas ca casino greeter the guy in, working in a way. downtown in the Sands Hotel the the retired athlete just cashing in on the last embers of his fame I, when when he used to be Jordan in New right. York, he got the documentary that was 10 parts that he negotiated with Disney. He got the documentary with full editorial. It was not a documentary. As did it was, Michael Jordan. It was a love. So was Last Dance. If Last Dance comes out not during COVID, it doesn't get the reception. No, it was. No, Michael Jordan keeps that fascination. Michael Jordan was a failure. You can't remember a single thing about a team of his in ownership. A play. You can't remember a play. That happened when Michael Jordan owned that team, and that failure will not stick to him. He cashes out ten times the price tag, and that failure will oh, not stick easy, to him. Easy, Dan. He lost plenty of money year over year. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. He operated it at a loss. I didn't say I don't know anything about the Hornets other than what he bought it and what he sold it for. He's very good at business, but Jordan is not a failure for what he did at the ownership level. His teams just weren't good, and he's an athlete. Just because you're I'm the goat. That, I'm saying the stain of ownership failure doesn't stick to him the way Jeremy just slandered and slimed Jeter with it by saying he's he's saying A-Rod won, that Jeter's got to go and ask A-Rod's permission to be on that set so that he can give baseball opinions. I didn't quite say that, but I did say, and, and the reality is with Jeter and the Marlins is it look, at least – 
Michael Jordan sort of stuck it out and continued to do the job even amidst the failure trying to improve the team. Derek Jeter made eye contact with Avisael Garcia at a breakfast and signed him to a $55 million contract. Like, it is weird the way that it all went down there. And 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 the, I was fine. When Jeter left the Marlins, it was fine. It wasn't like I was sitting here, you know, uh, criticizing the guy's character. He got fired, but it Jeremy. Is, uh, fine. But it is the, the, the part that changes it is when he now becomes the commercialized pitch man that A-Rod is. Like, his whole thing was, I'm better – morally than A-Rod, and now they're sitting at the same table laughing over a Red Sox jersey. It's just not the stuff I ever expected to see from Derek Jeter post-career. Billy, your thoughts? I thought the jersey thing was kind of funny. (laughs) Did you not like it? It was stupid. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't the highest of humor, but, you know. That that's what we want out of our. If you're an executive, that's yeah. what you're looking for. That's what they're looking show. for. Is that I mean, not that what they're is, looking that, for? That is a moment. That's exactly what they're looking it for. It got traffic on social media. Yeah, I circulated shenanigans. it. Shenanigans. Well, if you circulated it, I mean, that is the barometer, is it not? The, <laughs> I'm a tastemaker. How was that London trip? I, it seemed stupid to me. Metalar turned me down. I asked to go to London. I thought it was important to have representation. Television is as silly as just put Jeter and A-Rod out there, have them open a box, ta-da. In that way, Look, A-Rod and— It wasn't just a box. It was a jersey, a Red Sox jersey, and then it had Jeter on the back. But he played for the Yankees. They're rivals, Dan. David, David, if I may, as someone that's trying to take away all our meals over here, yeah. I would rather have a bagel with cream cheese— then have you fly to London to watch the Cardinals. You do get bagels with cream cheese. It's just not H&H now. I didn't like both teams wearing their home whites. Not a fan of that. There's so a road dumb. team and a home team. I they saw that the baseball. Red Sox the other day. This was offensive to me. I saw the Red Sox were 19 and four in yellow jerseys, <laughs> and I'm like, get that out of here. Get those City yellow edition. jerseys. Get the yellow jerseys out of here. The Red Sox shouldn't be in yellow jerseys. It doesn't bother you that the NBA has home teams playing in dark jerseys now. It only bothered me this one time in the history of fabric. Red Sox shouldn't be wearing yellow jerseys. But they're 19 and four wearing the jerseys. TV really is that easy. Open a box and just have a set of teeth for a face. Works for Gretzky. <laughs>